Hello folks, welcome to another part in this Call of Duty style loadout system tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to take a look at setting up the actual background of our UI and also updating the background weaponry based on our selection and also to set up the camera position of the scene component as well. Again, if you have come this far, I really appreciate it if you could hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you have subscribed, I really appreciate your support to making this channel grow. I welcome you to the channel one more time and let's get into the video today. First to get started, I'm going to go to my content drawer, drag out this loadout scene into the world. This is temporarily, we're gonna place it here, but in the future state, you will place it underneath the map where the player cannot see it. You would mostly spawn this in using a blueprint code whenever the loadout is open, which we will take a look at it in another tutorial. But for now, I'm just gonna place it in the map for the time being. I'm gonna to go to my content drawer, open up my loadout scene. If I go to my viewport, you'll notice that my camera is right here in the front. We want to create a blueprint function where we are less dependent on manually moving this camera around. And we wanna automatically move this camera around to focus on the equipment that we're currently selecting in our loadout. Now, there is a thing called offset, which you do need to manually set up. Offset is just a little tweak to your camera to for the final position, whether you wanna move the camera a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left or top or bottom based on your liking, that's a preferential thing. We will be using offsets as well, but not as much. I'll try to minimize the offset use, but if you would like in your game, you could always use offset to tweak the camera's final position after the blueprint has triggered. So just to reset everything, just to show you that we're not gonna be dependent on the camera's original position, I'm gonna set the camera's position to zero, zero. So this is the starting position of the camera. This is our scene capture component 2D camera, in case you're wondering. Now, we're going to go ahead and create a new function. We're going to rename this function calculate camera position. Now this calculate camera position, we're going to set in an input. The input would be our target mesh. So what this will do is this will, we need to input a mesh, whether it be our primary weapon, secondary weapon, melee, or any of these static mesh. In your game, you would do it with skeletal mesh if you're using skeletal mesh, but I'm using static mesh here. And we're gonna send in the static mesh information through the input. And then using that static mesh, we're gonna calculate the position of the camera. Let's go ahead and make this of type static mesh component. We wanna make sure that this is a component object reference. In your game, you would uh, if you're using skeletal mesh, then you would just use a skeletal mesh component object reference. And then in our outputs, what we want to have is our camera rotation, and this would be of type rotator. And then we need our camera location. This would be of type vector. Drag off of this target mesh and then search for get world location. We're gonna get the world location of the actual target camera. And we also want to move the camera in front of the actual mesh and also on the side of it. To get the side and the front, we're gonna get the forward vector to get the front angle of the mesh. And then we're gonna drag off of this and say get right vector to get the side. Now we're going to input our offsets. This is our offsets. Now this is going to be multiplied by our offset. Our offset is gonna be a type float. So if you multiply a vector, it's gonna give you another vector node. You're just gonna right click on this B vector and then select to float single position, which that will then convert it into a float. Now I have done some testing and I found out 100 is a really good uh, spot to be for a main weapon and a couple other things in the game. And then if you wanted to add some offsets, then in your game, you would then add additional. And I will show you how to do the offsets in just a moment. Let's do this function for now. And off of our right vector, we're gonna do the same thing. Take the right vector and multiply it. This is the side of the camera. So it's like the left side and the right side. And then the forward vector is the front and the back of the camera position. So I want to move the camera 100 units back from the weapon or the target. So I can actually put the target in my view. And then the right vector, I can move the camera forward or backward just to give it a little bit of the twist. You'll see it in just a moment. I'm gonna right click on this and then also make it into a float. And the number that I played with and I got really good results with was 160. Again, this is for the primary weapon. We're gonna use offsets to tweak it for the rest of the mesh in a moment. Now we want to drag off of this forward vector multiplication result and then do an add. And then add our right vector, just like that. And then get our world location and then add this newly calculated forward and right vector. And this will give you our camera location. This is our camera location. 
So this is where we want the camera to be. And also we're going to right click and put in, create a new node for find look at rotation. And then this is how we're going to get the actual uh, rotation of the camera. So the world location of our target mesh would be our target. And then the calculated forward and right vector, this is would be our starting location. And then this return value will be our camera rotation. And that's it for this function. I'm gonna go ahead, compile and save. Now let's go to our event graph. Let's create a, a custom event. This custom event is update camera position. Off of this update camera position, we're going to call in this function to calculate our camera position. To move the camera around, we don't want it to like snap to target. We want it to smoothly go from one position to another position. And the best way to do that is by doing using a timeline. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for a timeline and there's an option for add timeline. And then this one, I'm gonna name this as camera transition. We can connect this can calculate camera position as, as soon as it's done calculating, we can go ahead and play. And then double click on this camera transition and you will get the timeline. Here on the top, click on track and add a float track. Name this the alpha. And the length of the alpha would be one second. Again, if you make it shorter, then your camera would move that much faster. Right now it's gonna take zero to one second long to move the camera from the one position to another position. If you make it 0 0.5, then it will move, it, move much faster. We'll play with one second for now, and then we will update it and then make it faster if we need to. I'm going to go ahead and click on the zero, zero, and then add a key curve float, and then set the time to zero, value to zero. At the very end over here, I'm gonna add another key curve float, and then this one, I'm gonna set the time to one, which is our maximum time, and the value also to one. And then I'm going to click anywhere, it doesn't really matter, add another curve float, click on this, and then this one, I'm gonna make it half, so 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. Okay, there you go. And now what this does, it gives you a nice little smooth transition. We're done with the timeline. We don't need this anymore. Back in our event graph where we have our custom update camera position event, we're going to create two lerp nodes. So we're going to go ahead and right click here and then search for lerp. We want the lerp rotator. And then also we want to get our lerp vector. So these are the two lerps that we need. I'm gonna put it right on top of each other. Get our scene capture component. And off of this, get the world location. And also drag off of this and say, get world rotation. The world location of the scene capture component, we're going to plug it into lerp vector A. And then the world rotation of the scene capture component, we're gonna plug it into lerp rotator A. And now here, where we have calculated our camera position, we're going to, I'm gonna just move this up a little bit. The rotation, we're gonna plug in the rotation to the B, where we calculated rotation, and our calculated camera location, we're gonna connect it into this LERP A. With that done, the alpha from the camera transition, we're going to go ahead and then connect it in here as such. And then the last thing that we want to do is get our scene capture component and then drag off of this and say, set world location and rotation. And then this would be off of our update, right? And and the location, you're gonna plug it into the location and the rotation, you will plug it into the rotation as such. Let me quickly clean this up. There you go. Not the best looking thing, but this should do the trick. Compile and save. So now we need to calculate the camera position based off of the target mesh that is being provided. Now you could drag and drop the weapon mesh in here, and then now it would actually target towards the main weapon. So to check this, just to quickly test it, I'm gonna go ahead and create a event begin play, and then drag off of this and do a quick delay so that it doesn't move immediately. Let's do a two delay. And then here I'm going to say update camera position, call on this function. Right now, this is set to main weapon, and I'm going to go ahead and open up this RT scene. You can see the camera is like sitting underneath the world. And compile. And then if I go ahead, uh, let's actually make this three seconds, so I have enough time to switch to the RT. I can go ahead and play. And then if I go to the RT scene, you'll notice the camera actually moves up here. One more thing that we're going to do is also set our FOV. The camera movement is doing very well, and that one second is nice. 
To do our FOV, I'm going to get our scene capture component, drag off of this and say get field of view. And then I'm going to put in a interp, oh, sorry, a lerp float. And that'll give me a float lerp. And then we're going to go ahead and connect this field of view to A. And the target, uh, I want to set to like, let's say 25. Usually the camera component, the field of view starts at 90. And 25 is like zooming really in. And I'm going to set it to 25. And the alpha, it's going to be the same as our timeline. Alpha. And then again, grab, drag our scene capture component and then say set field of view and drag this return value from the lerp here. And then the world location and rotation, just drag that to connect it to here. So how this would look in game is if I compile, save, and then press play, go back to my loadout scene, it will look like this. And this is exactly what we want. Again, this is where the offsets come into play. If you want to tweak the camera a little bit to the left, the right, or move it up a little, move it down, this is where you would add in an offset to do all of that functionality. So this looks good. So let's stop it, and then let's test it with another component. If I were to take the main weapon away, and then let's say we put in our melee. So this is, again, I'm going to show you how the offset's going to work here. So if I look at the scene, you see that it's zooming into the camera. Now, again, if you want more focus into it, then you will set the field of view, or you will reduce the distance on our forward vector or our right vector. So if I were to close this now, let's start making some variables. So this lerp B, which is our field of view, we're going to go ahead and drag off, drag this and say promote a variable. This we're going to name target FOV. And then go to your calculate camera. And this 100 that we're setting up here, this would be our, drag this and then promote to a variable. And this would be our backward offset. Drag this value 160 off of the right vector, and then we're going to promote to a variable and then name this the side offset. So this is going to be our offset setup. Now, the last thing that we're going to do before we close off this tutorial is to actually add this render target onto our loadout. So we're going to go to our loadout system, go to our UI, and then in our pause menu, we want to now create a image and then drop it onto our canvas panel. This would be on our canvas panel. And this image, we're going to uh, rename this as our background. And this, we're going to go ahead and set the anchor to the entire screen, and then just reset the offset right and offset bottom. And this will be on top of everything. So we're just gonna drag this background and then put it right below the background blur and select this background. And then the image, we're going to go back to our loadout system and our loadout scene. I went ahead and I created this material. Um, again, it's pretty straightforward to create this material. I'll go ahead and delete it and I'll show you one more time. So right click on this loadout scene. We're going to go ahead and click on create material and then just name it as it is. Open this up, set the surface to user interface and the blend mode to opaque, apply, and then connect this RGB to the final color. Apply and save. Now we can close this and then go ahead, drag this material onto our background here as such. Compile and save. Now we only want this background to be visible when the loadout button gets clicked. So where we have the function for the loadout button, right here where it says on clicked. If you look at it on clicked, we're going to open and set the visibility of our loadout button container. We're going to do the same thing for our background as well. So click on the background and then make it make sure it's a variable. Go to your graph, drag this background, and then say get background, and we're gonna do the same thing. Copy this visibility and then paste it, and then connect it. Both of these execution pins, and then set the background as the target. In this event, begin play, let's go ahead and get rid of the delay, connect this directly to the camera position, and then let's set this to our primary weapon as our default, right? So we're gonna go ahead and compile and save, and the pause menu should be updated. So if I go ahead and press play in game, and if I press T, the loadout menu will pop up. And the weapon is actually being uh, our focus point here as well. And back in our pause menu, we just need to make sure that this background is set to hidden default. Compile, and then now we press play. And then when we press T, you'll notice that there's nothing on the screen here. If I click on loadout, you'll notice that actual weapon in the background pops up here. And the last thing that we're going to do here is also to change the weapon in the background. We're going to go to our content drawer. 
go to our load loadout system, UI, and then where it says loadout button, we have a function here for on hovered. If you notice when it says on hovered, we have a UI hovered um, function, interface function that is triggering. Now we're gonna create another interface function. And this one, we're going to go to our loadout system, blueprints, and then open up our BPI loadout and update this function as update underscore loadout scene. And then this one would require it to have a index so we can tell them which scene we need to update. And then this would be of type integer. Now, if you remember, if you open up your first person character, in our event graph, we set up a setup scene function. This setup scene function requires an index, which will then get the actual index from our loadout struct, which is our struct with all of our loadouts. And then it sets up the scene in our loadout scene as such. This is exactly what we're going to utilize here. To utilize this, we're going to go to our loadout button where it says QI hovered. We're going to go ahead and say get player character. And off of this, we're going to call out loadout update loadout scene. Make sure it's a message. And the index would be our loadout index as such. And now in my first person character, I'm going to go to my event graph. We can get rid of all of this and then even the keyboard press one. We're gonna go ahead into our class settings and implement our BPI loadout interface and then get our function for update loadout scene. Right click on it and then implement. And this update loadout scene, we're gonna connect our executables and the index, we're gonna connect it to the index. So the issue here that we're seeing is that our interface has a setup scene functionality and then our uh, first person character also has the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna quickly delete this, go to our class settings, remove the interface, right? And then go to our function, rename it, and then we're gonna call this loadout setup. And then now, if I go ahead and then add in our interface, BPI loadout, and update loadout scene, if I go ahead and implement it, connect this, index to index. If I compile, this should work fine. Now, if I go into the game and I press T, click on loadout. If I hover over loadout one, you'll notice that the loadout two is showing and loadout three is the same issue that we had previously. So we just gotta make sure that here where we state our loadout index, we're just gonna subtract one. We're gonna go ahead and uh, subtract, and then this would be one, and then go ahead and plug it into our index. If I go ahead and I press play, and press T again, loadout, and if I hover over loadout one, you'll see the AK in the back, loadout two, loadout three, four, five. You'll notice like everything in the scene is actually changing, including your grenades and such. Now this is all about playing with that offset to move the camera to the right here so that the weapon is more visible over here. So folks, I think this is a great spot for us to stop our video training today and then pick it up on the next one. So again, thank you very much for coming this far in this video tutorial series. I really appreciate your time. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button so you get notified when the next part gets released. Once again, Thank you very much for being a part of this community. I really appreciate you and your time. I'll catch you on the next one.